Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be the first of a few videos that covers the settings and interface of Texturizer. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the add-on preferences as well as the structure of the interface and how to navigate it. Let's get right into it. If you are looking to install and get started with Texturizer, please take a look at the video description for a link to that video. Here I have a Blender file open. I'm gonna hover my mouse over the 3D viewport here and press N on my keyboard. That's gonna open up this side panel in which I can navigate to my texturizer panel. This panel is going to contain all of the parameters that we can control for our image generation. But in order to actually use texturizer, what we need to first do is press setup file for AI. And what that's gonna do is create two new workspaces along the top of our Blender file here. And you'll see texturizer and AI layers. Texturizer is more for convenience, but AI layers is going to be necessary for the functionality of the add-on. So I would suggest not touching it. Here in our texturizer workspace, we have in our 3D viewport again, our texturizer panel, but then also on the left side of our workspace, there's an image viewer editor and there's a texturizer panel there as well. So our image editor panel is gonna serve two purposes. The first is to view the render layers that are used as inputs for guiding the generation. And the second is to see our generated outputs along with our history and favorites. If we navigate back to our 3D viewport panel and look along the top bar here, we have settings, website, and docs. So our settings is gonna open up our user preferences for texturizer. And let me expand that here. Along the top of the preferences, there's three links the texturizer site, our written documentation, and then the ComfyUI GitHub repository for the texturizer nodes. So if you haven't checked out the documentation and you're having an issue or you're trying to figure out how to do something with the plugin, this is a really great place to start. If I click on one of these, this lays out in a lot of detail what every single button does in the panel. So either come back to this video or definitely check out the documentation. Back in our preferences below the links, there's check for updates. By pressing on that, it's going to ensure that you have the latest version of Texturizer installed. And if you don't, it'll inform you what the latest version is that you can get and just go back to wherever you got the plugin from in order to download the latest version. In order to run ComfyUI locally and start it from within Blender, you need to ensure that use local ComfyUI install is enabled and that the ComfyUI path is the path to your local installation of ComfyUI. If this path is incorrect, it'll give you an error and let you know that it was not able to locate the ComfyUI directory. The Texturizer ComfyUI nodes is what allows for the Blender plugin to interface with your ComfyUI install. And to ensure that the plugin is running smoothly and properly, you're gonna want to ensure that you're up to date with the latest version. Keep in mind that the version number here is not necessarily the same as the version number of the plugin. So these two numbers may not match. And all you have to do to install it is it will tell you if you need to update to a higher version, or in my case, it says reinstall version 0.0.1. .0 that means that I already have the latest version, which it also tells me here, texturizer nodes are up to date. But if I click reinstall, it will pull the uh, nodes that are stored in the plugin and move them into your Comfy UI directory. Below there, there is a warning that says to use certain workflows, additional Comfy UI node packs are required. These node packs, similar to Texturizer Comfy UI nodes, are additional packages that add functionality to the base Comfy UI install. For the time being, the SD Complete workflow and Texturizer Flux workflows require additional packages, but in the future, as new workflows are added, new requirements may be added as well. So come back here after updates to see if there's any of those. So these packages here need to be installed manually. And by clicking on the links provided, it will bring you to the corresponding GitHub repos. In this case, ComfyUI IP Adapter Plus. And if I scroll down, there's a great installation guide already here. So It'll walk you through how to download the repository to your custom nodes directory, as well as the models that you need to download in order to use that. And for Texturizer Flux, it will require ComfyUI GGUF nodes. And again, if you install, in order to install those, just scroll down and there is uh, information on that here. Below there, we have recommended starter models. And by expanding this, 
The first thing you see is a warning, letting you know that these are large files. And the reason for that is they are going to take some time to download. So by clicking on each of these buttons, it will download them directly to the corresponding ComfyUI directory. In this case for SD 1.5, and in this case, it's SDXL models. Below the models, we have our server URL. I'll get back to the override server in a moment, but our scheme is going to either be HTTP or HTTPS. Our server host displayed here is our local host and our port is whatever you want it to be. ComviUI by default is 8188. And this is going to be the server URL that is used for starting ComviUI as well as for connecting to ComviUI if it's already started. What override server does is it allows you to type out the server address in full. So this is important both if you're using ComviUI not locally as well um, if you have just any other specific server address that you're running off of. And additionally, it allows you to input authentication, so username and password, if your server requires that. Use custom Python executable will let you specify the path to a custom Python environment that you want to run ComfyUI from. If you've done a normal installation of ComfyUI, then you probably will not need to touch this. In order to use ComfyUI on a remote server, ensure that you have use local ComfyUI install disabled. And then that's going to remove the settings from the panel that have to do with starting ComfyUI from within the texturizer add-on. It's going to also let you know that you need to have the ComfyUI texturizer nodes installed on your remote server. That'll have to be done manually. And so either follow this link to the GitHub repository or you can use the ComfyUI manager and search for texturizer to get that installed. Um, again, if you want to use these other workflows, you will need to have these additional node packs installed. Likely you will need to use the override server option. And so check that and you can put the full link to your server address again in this bar here. Below our ComfyUI settings, we have our data preferences. And this is where we can specify the directory structure in which we want our texturizer data to save to. This is going to be both the input data as well as the output images that we get from ComfyUI um, will be saved according to the data structure that you specify here. By default, it's going to say always use default data directory and then use default data subdirectory. The default data directory is going to be um, the path that's specified here. And then the subdirectory is going to be the name of your Blender file with a uh, sort of tag to it, AI outputs. So you can see for me, the data directory structure says it's the default data directory, which we can find here, along with the blend file name, underscore AI outputs. If for instance, I uncheck use default data subdirectory, you'll see that our data directory structure has now changed to our default data directory and then texturizer temp AI outputs. This means that no matter what Blender file we're working in, it will save and overwrite the data um, in this directory here. Now, even if you have this checked, if you're working in a Blender file that's not saved, it will save that data to this temp directory as well. If you would like to not use the default data directory, uncheck this option here, and now the data will instead save specific to the blend file path. So wherever your blend file directory is, it will then save under, a, again, the name of your blend file underscore AI outputs. Open here, I have the data directory of this current Blender file. And the structure of this directory has three folders. The first is our data. And our AI data JSON file is going to contain the information that's captured by our texturizer panel here. The image layers folder is going to have the render passes that are exported from Blender. And again, that are used from, uh, within ComfyUI. And then our output images is going to contain our most recently generated images, as well as a history of all the images we generated within that file. Now back in our preferences, this embed data option is gonna be critical if you are using ComfyUI from a remote server. And you'll notice that if I disable use local ComfyUI install, that will automatically get selected. It is going to package the data that is captured within the texturizer panel and these re base render layers and send those to the remote server. If instead you're using a local ComfyUI install and embed data is disabled, 
it will read that in comf UI will read that information directly from this data path. And that will save a little bit of time on each generation because there's less data that needs to be sent back and forth. The last couple settings that we have in our add-on preferences here are switch to advanced UI. This is also accessible from within our main texturizer panel here. And I'm going to cover what that allows you to do in the next video, but it essentially is going to give you more fine tuned control over the parameters for your generation. And then this additional custom workflows directory is going to let you specify a path in which you've stored additional workflows that you'd like to use within texturizer. This is really going to let you expand the capabilities of texturizer to whatever your needs may be. And in an upcoming video, I'm going to walk through how you can use the texturizer nodes in order to build out a workflow that utilizes the data um, from within texturizer. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested. So that covers everything in our add-on preferences. And before we wrap up this video, I'm going to just cover the settings at the top of our texturizer panel here. So again, this is our settings button and it will open directly up our add-on preferences. We also have, again, links to the website and documentation. And below there, we have save and load parameters. This is going to let you save specific presets of your texturizer settings for later use. And so if I click on save here, I can either specify a name and click OK, or I can press save as default. That will save any settings I have here as my default texturizer settings. So anytime I open up a new Blender file, those settings will be loaded in. And then next to there, I can load parameters that I've saved. And you'll notice if I click on one of these, uh, I have some options. So I don't have to load all of the parameters. I could, for instance, only load um, the prompts from this saved preset, or I can specify any of these other options. To the right of that, there's an option to load parameters from an image. And if I click on that, whenever you generate an image with texturizer, it will save in the metadata of the image, the parameters that were used in generating it. And you can then access those parameters after the fact from any of the images you've generated in texturizer. If you want to access parameters from a different file or from, for instance, an image that you've downloaded that someone else has generated, you can specify, you can, you can navigate to where that image is downloaded and then click on it. And again, you can select the parameters that you'd like to load and press load parameters. Now that we've covered the add-on preferences and UI layout in the next video, I'm going to begin to go through the sub panels and explain the different options that are available within them and how you can get the best images possible from within texturizer. If you're interested in this content, please consider subscribing. And in the meantime, check out the other videos on this channel, as well as the video description for more information on how to get started with texturizer today. Thanks so much for watching and have a good one.